What a week. We have seen big blades, crazy holds, records broken, new players, the first reverse sweep of the season, and yes, we saw the Houston Outlaws. Hey guys, how's it going? It's Danconi and welcome back to the Overwatch League Roundup 2020 Week 3 Results. So, I might start doing that little thing at the start of the video. It would be, be quite good to do because I think the intro gets a bit bland from that every now and then. But, it has been an absolutely bonkers week in Washington. So it was a Washington Justice homestand for Week 3. And we have seen some crazy, crazy gains. From the very best Overwatch we've seen to the very, very worst. Some of the worst we've seen possibly in our history. We've seen crazy holds. We have seen really bad, just bad, we've, we've seen bad, we probably know the team I'm referring to there, and one of these games could be considered a form of torture. But hey, we're going to look at them all. So, on Saturday, February the 22nd, we kicked off with the big match of the weekend. It was New York Excelsior taking on the Philadelphia Fusion. Both teams who are coming into this off the back of their own homestands where they had gone 2 and 0. Oh. Philadelphia Fusion had looked very good last week. New York Excelsior had looked very good the week before. The thing is, who was going to come out on top? Both teams were pipped to be one of the best teams in the league this season. But who had that bit more clutch? Who had that bit more of a clean fight to them? Well, this time around, it's the Philadelphia Fusion. And to be quite honest, it really was the Philadelphia Fusion. They looked a lot, lot cleaner than NYXL did. NYXL, they were a bit scrappy at times, and Philadelphia Fusion definitely came into this with a very, very good game plan. And they executed it pretty much perfectly. And a lot of the time, it was to just focus Jonak. Jonak got picked off so many times at the start of fights for New York Excelsior. And it really wasn't pretty. And Carpe, again just like it was last week, right at the level that we expect of Carpe, popping right off. And New York Excelsior at times really didn't respect that, and it cost them dearly. New York Excelsior put a 1 in that loss column for the first time this season. Philadelphia Fusion move up to 3-0 and zero for this season so far, and Philadelphia Fusion are definitely looking like they can compete with the very, very best in this league right now. And... Oh, I can't wait to see te them take on people like the Titans and the San Francisco Shock. It should be really, really interesting. But we go from some of the best Overwatch to Boston and Houston next. Yeah. So this was a game. It, it, it happened. And if you ever come across someone who loves to watch really good Overwatch and you want to torture them, you just show them this match. Show them this match and you, you'll be fine. You, you will get the torture you want. So, yeah, I predicted Boston to win this one, and they did. They got a 3-2 win over the Houston Outlaws. It wasn't pretty by any means. So, Boston win Ilios pretty convincingly over the Outlaws. Then we get a draw on Anubis. Then we get Boston winning Dorado pretty comprehensively. Then we get a draw on Blizzard World. Then we get Houston winning Oasis. Houston winning Nepal. And then we get Boston comprehensively winning Li Zhang. Oh my goodness me. It was a seven map series. And the sats are all of it. <laughs> it was it was not good Overwatch. Uh, I think we can all agree that these two teams definitely look like the worst teams in the league right now. Houston honestly looked like a team that may struggle against some contenders teams right now. Um... Yeah, at least I can say Boston showed a little bit of coordination. Houston didn't. At the moment, well, Moomer was awful. Um, I'm just going to put that out there. The brightest spark for Houston right now is actually Jexa. He looks actually really good. And I just feel sorry for him that he's on the Houston Apples. That's all I can say, really. That's all I can say. Don't go back and watch this match. It's just a Papega fest. Just like we thought it would be. Uh, but I think, as we expected, Boston are just going to edge it over the Houston Outlaws. But both teams are trash, let's be honest. Moving on. Paris Eternal taking on the Washington Justice. Now we get back to some better Overwatch. And, honestly, this was really interesting. Washington Justice hosting their, obviously, their own homestand. 
Paris Eternal with Hanbin for the first time, their new South Korean off tank coming in from Edmund Mystic. And he looked really good. Paris Eternal get a 3-1 victory over the Washington Justice, not the start that the Justice were looking for at their own home stand. And I think this is testament to Paris Eternal being a good team. Honestly, XZ really good again. Nico really good again. Best Ben Best is stepping up. FD God is good. Hip is good. And then Hanbin's come in and kind of rounded this roster out. Because remember when we last saw the Paris Eternal, they were playing double main tank with Ben Best and no smite because they didn't have Hanbin and they didn't have Smex. So this is a really, really good show from the Paris Eternal. And I think they are going to be a team that is not going to be in the right upper echelons, but they are going to be a team that is in that little pack below. The pack where we're kind of expecting the Soul Dynasty and the likes. That, ooh, let's say 6th to 8th, ninth, something like that. I think that's where the Paris Eternal are right now. But again, it's still very early days, so let's not get too ahead of ourselves. So, moving on to the games on the Sunday then. And we had New York Excelsior taking on the Houston Outlaws. Oh boy, oh boy, it doesn't get any easier, does it, Houston? At least on the bright side of things, you have your homestand next week. So if it really does go wrong, you can pick some p people out of the audience to have them play instead. But New York Excelsior got a 3-0 victory over the Houston Outlaws as expected. The thing is, though, if you watch the game, it still didn't look as clean as you'd want it to from a team like NYXL. And I think it's worrying. They get the 3-0 victory that they should get, don't get me wrong. But the the coordination is still not quite there. And we keep saying this with New York Excelsior. They are transitioning, obviously with the loss of Pavane. They've got a bit more, a bit different in terms of coaching. And they want to go, go to a style that we've seen the Shock and the Vancouver Titans use in this season just gone. A more aggressive style of play. And New York Excelsior, not used to that. Mano was always very passive along with Merco. And now you've kind of got this half and half thing at New York itself. So you've got Who Are You and Hot Bar, the more aggressive side. And you've got Mano who's like, am I aggressive? Am I passive? I don't know what I'm doing yet. And yeah, that's kind of where they're coming across her right, right, right now. If they can sort it out, though, they've definitely got the players to be one of the best teams in the league. I think we all know that New York Excelsior is very good. But one thing that has to stop happening for NYXL is Jonak getting picked off. He needs to... I think Jonak gets a bit too aggressive sometimes and goes for a bit of damage as Diana, especially when he's as Diana. And yeah, he gets punished, especially again in the fusion match. He really got punished for that. Uh there needs to be there needs to be something worked out there. And I'm sure the Excelsior coaches will sort that out in time. Houston Outlaws, not much to say. We go to Houston next week. Yeah. Moving on. Toronto Defiant taking on the Philadelphia Fusion. This is a cracker of a match. This is a really good match. The next two matches, the Toronto Defiant versus Philadelphia Fusion and the London Spitfire versus the Washington Justice. If you're going to go and watch any games from this weekend, these are the two matches you want to watch. Either that or the Fusion match against NYXL. But these matches are close. So, Fusion actually looked really good to start off with against the Toronto Defiant. And they, actually, they looked good throughout the game. They got a 2-0 two, a two lead at halftime, the Fusion. And we kind of like, well, this is the Fusion. They're really, really good. Toronto aren't really, really bad, don't get me wrong, but Fusion are just too good for them, they're going to sweep them aside, blah, blah, blah. And Toronto were like, nah, mate, nah, nah, that's not going to happen. We're going to step up and we're going to give this Fusion team a game. And that they did. They came back after halftime, got two map wins on Dorado and a very, very close Kings Row, which went 6-5 to the Toronto Defiant. And all of a sudden we're at 2-2 and we're thinking, damn, reverse sweep time. Not quite though. Fusion come back on control on Nepal and get a 2-0 victory on that map to seal a 3-2 win over the Toronto Defiant. This is a really good showing from the Toronto Defiant though. Beast, yes he wasn't as good as Sal Sado in the main tank, but he is certainly isn't the worst main tank we've seen this season. Certainly isn't. So, well the worst main tank this season at the moment is Muma. so congratulations to him. But, um... Toronto Defiant, definitely, this is really promising. I mean, they got a better result against the Philadelphia Fusion than NYXL did. Uh, whether that's because Philadelphia perhaps pre prepared more for NYXL than they did for Toronto Defiant, we don't know. But this is very promising for the Toronto Defiant, especially if they want to mount a cheeky playoff push. A cheeky playoff push. This could be good for the Toronto Defiant. But 
Moving on to the last game of the weekend, and it was the London Spitfire taking on the Washington Justice. So, Washington Justice wanting to overturn that 3-1 loss to the Paris Eternal earlier in the weekend. They wanted to get a win in front of their home fans. London Spitfire coming off the back of a 0-2 week in the first week, where they lost heavily to Paris and actually gave the NYXL a game, so we can't really moan about that. This game, this game was pretty bonkers for a lot of reasons, right? So... Washington Justice take a 2-0 lead in ha into half time and honestly it wasn't it wasn't a whitewash for the Washington Justice don't get me wrong London Spitfire they were lacking the ability to close out maps and fights London could have easily have won Oasis the first map but they did not close out the final fights and they ended up losing a lot of the times 99 to 99 so London were just lacking that end game but after half time, I don't know what Pavain and Agape did for the for the Spitfire and the rest of the coaches, but it was a different team. It was bonkers. So London come out on Dorado, and they pull a selfless, a selfless gaming manoeuvre here. They spawn camp Washington Justice and hold them when they had only gained four meters on the payload. That is Overwatch League history right there. That hold is just bananas. It shouldn't be happening. Um, they basically came out at halftime and took a big dump on Washington's doorstep. And it caught everyone off guard. I don't think we will ever see a hold like that again on Dorado. Um, yeah. <laughs> That was very, very extraordinary what happened after that halftime during that match. And it continued to Blizzard World, the fourth map, where London Spitfire set a very respectable time on Blizzard World. They had a lot of time in the time bank hit when they were hitting third point, but Corey came out with the Widowmaker, popped off, and chopped a lot of the time bank off the clock. I think there was about one minute left for London Spitfire. But then Spitfire go and full held the justice. They win Blizzard World 3-0. The difference between London Spitfire in this first half of this match and London Spitfire in the second half of this match is just bonkers. London in the second half looked like they really could be a play-ins team. But of course we have one more map to look at and of course that was Nepal. London Spitfire, this was a really close map. A really, really close map. Both teams were popping off. But one thing I haven't seen from London this season, and honestly we didn't see a lot from London last season either, was the clutch. The clutch that London used to have in in the inaugural season when that entirely different roster won the league. They had that sort of clutch. This came back in Nepal where they get a 2-1 win over the Washington Justice and win their first match of the season condemning Washington Justice to a 0-2 homestand which is honestly surprising. I thought Washington Justice would win this game and win this game 3-1. I didn't think it would be massively, massively close. But London, their second half performance was completely different to, the, to what we've seen from London before. And I said this on Discord during the matches. If this is a glimpse of the project or the final form of the project that Pervain and Agape and the rest of the London coaches are trying to get done here, then... We're looking at a London squad that in the future could be a quite powerful squad. And something to note, this was a different look London as well. This didn't have Babel, this had Shui, so their DPS line was a Glister and Shui. And their tank line was J-Mac and Celestin. It wasn't Banar. And we all questioned why Banar wasn't in the squad. Hell, we can't question it, question it now, they won 3-2. So, this was a very, very weird game. But that Dorado map... I don't think, honestly, we'll ever see anything like that again. That was... That was bonkers. That was honestly bonkers. And this whole weekend was bonkers. From the Papega to the really crazy maps to just the really, really good Overwatch. This has been the best round of week we've had so far. And we had so many close gains. Three three twos. We saw no three twos last week. We could only see one map five in the whole season before this weekend. So this has been a really good weekend for the league. And what an entertaining week three we've just had. Finally, let's take a look at the standings then. And we see Philadelphia Fusion out in front at the top of the league. Rank number one with those four wins and zero losses on the board. Philadelphia definitely looking like one of the best, if not the best teams in the league this season. 
They are backed up by Vancouver in number two and San Francisco in number three. Those two, obviously, we don't know when we're going to see them right now. It's going to be well towards week nine-ish, week eight or nine. So we've got a little way till we see the Vancouver Titans and the San Francisco Shock again. New York are dropping down to fourth after their loss against the Fusion. Paris Eternal are in fifth. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if Paris can stick around that between fifth to eighth spot. Paris are looking pretty good. Toronto in 6th, Florida in 7th, Los Angeles Valiant in 8th, Boston Uprising in 9th, London have stormed up from 19th to 10th, and Washington Justice are in 11th with their extra loss on the board. Then of course in joint 12th we see Chengdu, Hangzhou, Atlanta, Guangzhou, Shanghai and Seoul, we haven't seen any of those teams in action yet. Then propping up the league we've got the Los Angeles Gladiators in 18th who we haven't seen since week 1, again also Dallas Fuel we haven't seen since week 1, they are in 19th with 2 losses on the board and rooted very, very firmly at the bottom, we have the Houston Outlaws with that 0-4 record, double figures in terms of minus map differential right now, minus 10, and oh, work to do, Houston, a lot of work to do. It is the Houston Outlaws homestand next week where they will take on London and they will take on Toronto, and if London play like they have done this week, if Toronto play like they have done this week, it's going to be a very, very bad home stand for Houston, but we will leave that until the preview for next week. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a like, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next video. See you then!